Okay, quick update on the sea collars that we carry here at the county. Um, we see a lot of improper use of these, whether it's by fire department personnel, EMS, or other um, first pre-hospital care providers. And so we're going to update you a little bit on this. Here recently there's been a lot of articles in the news about the use of sea collars and maybe going away from those sea collars and using some other type of device because these can cause an injury to your patient. So you must properly size these. So we're going to go over that with you and let you know exactly how to properly size this and place it on your patient. Okay, properly sizing a sea collar. When you take it out of the plastic pouch, it's like this. The first thing that we do is we flip the chin piece up and it just rotates over. And by the way, if you're looking at this collar now, what stands out the most? These little green dots here that you see. Originally, the manufacturer, when they placed these out into service, it didn't have these green dots. People were missing these little tabs right here. So they come back, they put a green circle around these tabs. Now, people are focused on those tabs, but do we all know what to do with them? Well, you're going to know because I'm getting ready to tell you. These tabs are to take your nasal cannula and place around and secure around the chin, around the patient's head, or a non-rebreather mask with a strap around this so you're able to tighten them up. And we'll show you a little video later on as to how to do that. Now, for sizing this collar, we have to find out how high we're going to need it. So we're going to take, it to the, take our fingers on the patient, place them on the top of the shoulder, and see how far up the distance is from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the chin. So if I size this up, it's about a three finger width. Maybe four on some people, maybe two. It depends on how big your hand is. But for me, it's three. So then we take our collar. And if you look on the side of the collar, it says sizing line. Well, you release all your locks here. Make sure you can extend the collar out. You take your three fingers, you place them even with this line. Now this plastic piece, not the foam insert, so let's bend that back so you don't see that. You take those three fingers and you go from one, two, three. Now the bottom of this plastic should come all the way up right there to the bottom. Should be exactly three finger width depth there. Once I have that, I secure it here, lock this in place, and then we can take this and we can place it on our patient. Someone's holding C-spine, we come underneath, we make sure that we get under the chin. And we secure it in place. We want to make sure that the head is not moving up and down. This should brace right on that sternum of the chest there uh, with no movement. That way you can visualize your patient's not able to move their head around at all. Now remember, these are just adjunct devices. These do not protect the C-spine itself. They keep the patient from moving their head to prevent further damage. So as we're moving down the road, those acceleration and deceleration forces are causing movement on that axial spine. So they're compressing. If there's an injury of the cord going down through the vertebrae, each time that you accelerate and decelerate, you have uh, a compressing of that injury. What's going to happen? When you have injury, you have edema. It creates further injury. So think about those things when you're driving to the hospital as well. Okay, remember we talked about these little tabs here on the side of the seat collars. So this is exactly what those little tabs are, if you're not aware of why they have these little green circles to draw your attention to them. If you have a patient you need to put a non-rebreather on, what you're going to do once you inflate your bag, you're going to place it on the patient's face. Once you do that, make sure you get it uh, real snug around the bridge of the nose, and then you take your strap and you pull it down underneath the chin of the patient and you can slide these straps right underneath those tabs. That allows you to tighten them up and now you have a mask that's secure that you can get to easy. It's not around the head. If you need to take it off quickly, 
you just unsnap it and you can do the face mask that way and you don't have it trapped around the patient's head. So we apply our, hook our nasal cannula up, put it on the leader flow that we want it on. We take it, tell the patient what we're doing. We come down, we're able to go around each of those tabs and we can cinch this up right up under the chin of the collar. Now you have that in place. How many of us have used the tape all over the patient's face trying to get these to stay in place? Now, hopefully you guys will start using these tabs um, for what they originally were intended for. Okay, just a quick point uh, on these C-collars. When you place these on patients, make sure that you're not putting these too tight. Uh, there's been a lot of times I've arrived on scene, and I'm not saying it's the fire department, it's EMS as well that's doing this. People are putting these collars on too tight around the patient's neck. So think about what that's doing. That's like putting a cat tourniquet around their neck. They're going to get some arterial flow up in there, but the venous, because it's a lower pressure, is not going to come back out. Because now you've restricted that flow. Now what's going to happen there? Well, if they have a head injury and we have ICP increasing, it's going to increase it more. So we need to think about these collars with, that when you're putting them on and you're securing them to that patient, that we're not putting them on too tight.